Larry Holder, Jeff Duncan, back here with you at the, the Saints draft. And we're wrapped up the first round, and the Saints have taken Wisconsin tackle Ryan Ramchek. We're going to botch his spelling of his <laughs> name probably 15 times. And pronunciation, probably. And I am assuming there are going to be Saints fans who feel like they botched this pick. And it's something to where <clears throat> you saw a run of defensive players at the end of the first round. And it's clear that they went with their best player available on the board. And, Jeff, if you look at the draft pundits and, and kind of the guys we trust in their rankings, you could see logic, but I can understand from the other side that is, this is not a position of immediate need, and I'm sure Saints fans are wondering what's going on here. Well, this is a guy Sean Payton said they had drafted in the first half of the first round. And so this was just strictly a best player available scenario for them. I think they clearly would have taken Tack McKinley if he were there right. because Sean Payton raved over him. Uh, and I think they would have taken Reuben Foster if he were there. But neither one of them were there. And so they went with the best player on their board. I think it's always hard to fault somebody for doing that because you're getting the best player you think at that spot. And look, they got another pick in 10 picks here in the second round. I think they're going to address pass rusher there. Yeah, I think even uh, the Saints might even feel like if there's one that's there, they're going to be aggressive to go get him because they so badly need one because mm -hmm. one didn't follow them. And you mentioned Sean Payton addressed Tack McKinley. Uh, he addressed Reuben Foster. And it's basically, you could, the, the 49ers assume the Saints are probably going to go get Reuben Foster. That's why they traded ahead right. one spot and took him. And you got him at the end of round one. Uh, but Jeff, some of Peyton's other comments, uh, look, uh, Marshawn Lattimore uh, was either number three or four highest graded guy they had on the board, so uh, they were ecstatic that they got him. Yeah, I think you could make a case that Lattimore, if you had your druthers and you were a Saints uh, personnel executive, he was probably the number three player you would want out of this draft behind Miles Garrett and Solomon Thomas. So to get that player at number 11, and then to come back and get a tackle who probably you think is going to be a starter for a number of years, uh, hard to fault either one of those picks. Uh, I think the first half of this draft probably played out as well as it possibly could have for the Saints. And maybe you could say it kind of came back around on them at the bottom of the first round because a lot of the guys I think they probably were targeting were off the board. Yeah, like Taco Charlton, Charlton came off the board, uh, TJ Watt. Right. Uh, a lot of those guys w were really flying off the board. And I'm, I'm almost kind of hopping around here just as I'm thinking what Sean Payne was saying. I'm going to hop back to the Lattimore pick. Uh, he said, look, they, they highly thought of uh, Malik Hooker at that point mm -hmm. because he, he, a lot of people thought he'd be a top 10 pick. He fell. Uh, he mentioned specifically Jonathan Allen's name, uh, that they really liked him, but he's not at a position of need. Cornerback is a huge need. Right. Of, among those three guys, you would go with the need guy. Uh, and it seemed like he's probably graded higher than those two. Yeah, you know, I think at 42, even though I think they clearly need a pass rusher, Sean Payton said there was no other pass rusher yeah. at number 32 that they had graded as a first-round pick. Uh, most of those guys, he said, are second rounders on their grades. So it makes sense to go for Ramchek. But I wouldn't be shocked if they didn't take a pass rusher at 42 either. I mean, they could take another corner. I think they could take a safety. I think there's a lot of ways they could go uh, and maybe try and get that pass rusher uh, later on in the second round or in the third round. Well, do you think Ramchek can rush the passer? Maybe they can do that. Well, they're going to need <laughs> they're gonna need somebody to rush the passer. I mean, that's something they've got to address. But... I'm glad they didn't reach. They stayed true to their board, and that's what you have to do on this day. What does this mean for Zach Streif? Well, clearly that's the eventual replacement for him. Mm -hmm. And whether that's this year or not, they're going to compete. I mean, he made no bones about it. Uh, they're going to get a chance to go at it in training camp. Uh, but I think I'll be surprised if Zach Streif doesn't start this year. Uh, it's very difficult to come in and start at that position in the NFL. I'd be stunned, and, and what Sean Payton even said, it sounded like Ramchek wouldn't even be able to get onto the field until training camp. He had hip surgery, and I'm sure Saints fans are loving even hearing that, too. Uh, first Lattimore with the hamstrings, now Ramchek, a guy not in a position of need, isn't even going to be able to be ready, say, OTAs. Uh, and they say training camp, but you never know. With as many medical issues as the Saints have had the last few years, I'm sure that's fans' worst nightmare to hear that both their first-round picks have medical grades. 
Uh, but both of them obviously were thoroughly vetted, I'm assuming, and uh, they felt like that their grades were high enough that they had that they were worth the risk reward. And Sean Payton didn't discount trading for a veteran or trading up within the uh, day two of the draft. Uh, and look, the veteran that everyone talked about going into this thing was Malcolm Butler. A lot of people, I know you and me figured 32 might get that done. They didn't do it. They took a tackle, and I bet you fans are going to be wondering. We traded Brandon Cooks away. We got a first-round pick, and we took a tackle. Right. And I think that is going to be a huge amount of angst for Saints fans debating this pick uh, going forward that – who knows how good this guy's going to be, and he's he certainly can't rush the passer, and he certainly doesn't play on defense. Well, and that was exactly the reasoning behind trading Brandon Cooks, at least publicly, was that they were going to try and bolster their defense. They weren't able to do that uh, at the end of the first round. Well, look, I think they'd also let, let's not kid ourselves. They also were thinking about Cooks contract situation a year or two down the road. Right. That played in. They didn't say that publicly, but that certainly played into that trade. And uh, Look, it didn't fall their way at the bottom, bottom of the first round. They took the best player. If they had their druthers, they would have gotten a defensive player there. There's no doubt. Uh, so we'll uh, see what they do in day two tomorrow. They got second round pick and two threes, so they have some flexibility. And I'm sure they'll be on the horn uh, trying to get some deals done, maybe acquire more picks, maybe move up. Uh, but, yeah, I think pass rusher, cornerback, you name it, all the positions that we've still talked about, that'll still be on the board. Yeah, I think they could even take another offensive player somewhere. It sounds like everything's available for this team right now. Sean Payton said a, a couple of times today, they've got a bunch of needs, so right. he knows it as well as we do. Yep, well, we'll be following all that tomorrow. Uh, check out all of our coverage of all things Saints at NOLA.com and in our predictions of the time speak unit. After each pick, uh, we'll be back on Facebook Live addressing the masses, uh, whether it's <laughs> Hip hip hooray, or you want to give it a thumbs down, like I'm sure many are giving a ram check. I'm not even panning the pick as bad, but Saints fans are. I've already seen the reaction on social media, and it's 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 pretty harsh. It's like Peyton says after uh, every Sunday game, it's either a crisis or a carnival. It seemed well, like a lot of crisis. It was a party about today. three hours ago. Now it's now it's a bit of a crisis. So uh, for Jeff, for Larry, thanks for joining us.